You can see in this video, the women are telling a story through dance of having to travel great distances, especially during the dry season, to just to get water for their families. Irene, we are here to talk about the Women's Center. Can you tell me why the center is needed? The center is needed because the women in our diocese, historically and traditionally, have been left behind in terms of up-to-date knowledge about how to improve their lives and the lives of their children and their families. And we want to address that. And who are the beneficiaries? of the centre? The beneficiaries initially will be the leaders of the women's organisation, or Uwaki as it's called, in our diocese. And they will come to the centre to receive up-to-date knowledge, to do short courses, to take field trips, and then they will return to their own communities to give that knowledge to the other women in their own groups, in their own parishes, and so the information will be dispersed right across the diocese. And can you tell me uh, the numbers of people who will be served by the centre? We are looking at the Iwaki itself with a membership of approximately 15,000 women. But this centre and its facilities and its education is open to all the women in the, our geographical area. After them, we expect to have courses also for older children, perhaps of the end of elementary school age, and we'll also have courses for men and for the youth. So it will really be serving families as a whole. Now it seems to me that transportation might be a problem. What kind of distances are we talking and how would transportation be provided, if provided? Well, transportation up until recently has been in our much used, very cumbersome but very much valued Land Rover over the last 18 years in fact. But as the cost of fuel continues to rise and will not come down again in a country like Tanzania, mm -hmm. the cost of doing that has become prohibitive. And although the roads are very rough and it takes a long time to cover the estimated 80 miles that some of these women will travel. Mm -hmm. It's still much more uh, economically sustainable for them to travel by bus. And it will be a very rough ride. We have no sealed roads outside the main towns. But overall, it will be much more economical for us to come in for them to come into the centre rather than for us to continue to try and go out and reach all of the parishes. We will cover many more leaders, we'll cover many more parishes. It will be a much more effective way of conducting this overall program. And tell me, uh, what will the centre do? What this will the programs be? The programs are basically educational and will cover areas which are particularly the responsibility of women and that will be connected with water, how to conserve it, how to collect it, how to prepare it to be uh, safe water, potable water for their families and for the communities. We'll cover things like environmental degradation, we'll cover things like changes to the environment in terms of global warming, and they are very obvious in our diocese. We'll cover matters of health because HIV and AIDS is a very, very big part of their lives and destroys many families each year. Malaria is still a huge problem. So we'll be giving up-to-date information about malaria and the new nets which are available for families. We'll be looking at issues of women's health following largely the Millennium Development Goals 
in our program, as well as looking at the local situations where already we've seen uh, the, de the effects of environment, environmental degradation and the need to look for alternative fuels, the need for women to understand both the, the way that uh, they should be cared for at the time of giving birth and afterwards, and the way that they can take, the st take their own steps towards making those better things happen. I noticed in the pictures here, you have this wonderful picture of women Tell us what they're doing here. These women are looking for water, and women spend a great deal of time in our diocese looking for water. There should be a lot of water in that area where they are at the moment, but as you can see, it's all sand, it's very dry. They will have a long way further to walk to get the water. And they'll have that one 25-litre bucket to their home each day. If the water is close by, they could maybe take back two or three buckets in a day. But if it's too far away, and given all the other things they must do in the household, they'll only have the one bucket of water for the whole family until they go again the next day. That's amazing. That's life. <laughs> yes. I'm curious uh, also, in the facility, I'm wondering how it will be staffed and whether or not there will be provisions for maintenance, maintenance of the facility, upkeep, so on and so forth. There will be provision for maintenance and this is where our working together with the uh, Theological College uh, will be a great benefit to, I hope, both of us. And our plan is to make the building itself, first of all, Energy uh, provide, have energy provided by a solar panel. The building plan has been revised to be a simple rectangle and therefore half the roofing will be an enormous solar panel. Enough for us to use and to share with the, the college itself. In terms of staff, we will employ local people and we will need a cook and an assistant. We'll need an overall supervisor, a lady who will be able to stay there with the women who will need to stay overnight in the courses. And we will need a night guard for the centre. Could you tell us where the centre will be located? The centre will be located on ground allocated to us by the diocese within the grounds for Salato Theological College, which is about 10 miles north of Dodoma town. That will give us the benefit of teaching staff from the college. It will also give us access to water. And the college itself will benefit from having extra short courses available to the students who were there, some of whom are women. Excellent. And how, how do you see the Women's Centre helping? And I guess the real question is, what are the short and long-term goals? The short-term goals for the centre are to add to the education and the skills of our leaders in the diocese, beginning with leaders at regional and deanery level, and for them to be able to carry that knowledge, that education, that, that experience that they have, are having back to their local communities and groups. Long term, because this centre is available to all the women, and therefore families, in our region, then we should be able to uh, to bring that knowledge to everyone in the whole region. So not only our 15,000 women in our own uh, organisation, but to women and other families in our whole region, which will be over one and a half million people. 
that's amazing uh, to be able to serve so many people. How can we be a part of this process? What is it that we can do to help you? There are lots of ways that we can work together to make this centre happen. Here, we rely on you to pray for us, to give us the encouragement to keep going, and essentially we need to build communication so that we keep each other informed, and especially we need to keep you informed of how we're doing, where we're up to, and why we're doing it, because our cultures are quite different. Uh, we also need to start building this centre, and that needs resources. The women themselves have already committed some uh, funds towards that. But we need to start with, for instance, an earthquake-proof foundation, because we're subject to earthquakes there. So we're looking to uh, start with the foundations, where we should all start with everything, and to build from there. So uh, we very much value your interest, your prayer support, and keeping us encouraged by writing to us, letting us know how, that you do remember us, and we in turn will be corresponding and communicating with you as we go along in this process. I just want to thank you for being here, for sharing with us this incredible ministry, and for uh, being such a, an advocate uh, for all women and families. Really thank you very much. Thank you very much. It's been a privilege to be in Atlanta.